Hi folks, welcome to the fifth Wednesday widget. I gotta say thanks. The reaction and commentary from last week's episode, the fourth one, it's just awesome. I love that you guys love this stuff. Uh, the folks were talking about creating their own poll about who has been influenced in either getting into machining or even buying a Tormach mill because of my channel, and that means the world to me. I never thought, you know, eight, 10 years ago that it'd end up uh, where I am today, focusing on these videos while I run my shop. So it's it's really cool. I, I love it, and I gotta say thank you to you guys. Uh, I also wanna say thanks to Tormach. They picked up my channel as a sponsorship recently, slightly before I started the Wednesday widget, uh, and they love the Wednesday widget. They've really gotten behind it, even on stuff that's not gonna emphasize Tormach products, but rather what I do, which is sort of this, you know, manufacturing at home, prototyping, physical computing with the Arduino type stuff. So thanks to Tormach. Uh, I love them. I've known them as a company now for about five years. Great stuff, and I'm glad that they're helping put these videos out. Uh, so thanks, guys. This week, we are going to make a tool for the shop. We make these USPSA style target hitch covers that you can see here. They're kind of a gag gift. The story is I was at a shoot with like some buddies and someone sort of jokingly challenged me like, can you could you make one of those things and how easy would it be? I think it was on a Sunday and we all shot on Monday nights and the next day I sort of just showed up and handed him one casually and, and he was impressed. It's kind of funny, both this week's tool and, and that story in itself is kind of what I love about where I've gotten to in life, which is I feel like I can make a lot of stuff whether it's the lathe or the torch made or the Tormach or some of the manual equipment I've got here, I love knowing that with the stuff I've got here, the raw material, the supplies, I can make stuff. Uh, and that's the goal today. So we powder coat these, and after we've masked the other sides, one of the things we do is powder coat the hitch part, mostly for aesthetic and weather protection. And we wanna do that by holding the inside of the tube, and you want a pair of reverse pliers to do that best. You want to keep your fingers off it, keep the part clean, be able to transition it over to the hanging hooks or the oven without having to touch anywhere on the outside of the part. So let's make a pair of reverse pliers. Now, lots of ways to skin the cat here. Yes, you could buy a pair. The most common reverse pliers you'll see online are snap ring pliers, but we've got equipment and let's have some fun here. Now I've often talked in the Wednesday widgets about design philosophy and, and even the business philosophy. And this is a tool, it's a real tool. We sell these things. I don't mind investing a little bit of time into them but it's not a tool in the sense that the quality of the tool is going to result in its longevity or a higher quality end part. It's more of a convenience type tool. So I wanna make it and I wanna make it quick. Now inevitably it'll be slowed down because I'm, I'm filming a video here, but I wanna walk you through what I do, which is I think of the tool in my head, then we're gonna hop into SolidWorks, design it, then when we make the part, we're probably gonna deviate from SolidWorks because we're gonna kinda of use stuff we've got laying around and we're not gonna be as precise, you'll see with how we mark the holes and so forth. Uh, without further ado though, let's dive in. So, solid works. Uh, also in last week's video, I talked about how happy I am I moved to it and some of the folks agreed measuring is a great thing about solid works. Probably not reason alone to cut a check that size, but it is really, really convenient. I use it all the time and it won a very quick example, or a few examples would be you know, being able to select two faces, gives you the normal distance, select the edge, gives you the same distance, or if you just swap over here and s select two faces, it gives you the reference angle between the two of them. Uh, helps me move, move quickly in the shop. So I've got this all modeled up already, and here is the piece of tubing. I'm not gonna show you that, guys, because you know how to model tubing at this point. So we'll hide that, actually undo. We will, we will uh, change the transparency so that's transparent. Now these aren't the prettiest looking things, I will admit that, but like I said, we're not actually going to adhere perfectly to what we have modeled. I modeled these up very quick as a proof of, sort of proof of concept and uh, to get the part to plasma cut. And you can see here, I think this left one is fixed, but the way they'll work is they'll clamp outward. And this diameter here is close to the diameter of the hole. And then this one, I've got um, offset with two little studs because I want to be able to get a hook in there that they hold on the racks for powder coating. So I don't want something obstructing that hole like so. And I've already had a couple ideas, which I'll show you here in a minute, about what we're actually going to do for those. Again, the CAD is just to get something going here. This will be for a, a spring to push them open, and I've got an idea on how to do that. What I will do is open just one of the pliers and walk you through how I designed it so you can see we start with a little shape like so that I just sketched by hand, if you will, in SolidWorks. 
so hole for our pivot point. I relieved an area here, and then the rest are just some simple fillets and rounding corners. What was that one? I think that's actually the hole. The hole up here. And the last one is extruding this pin here for the spring. So that's the, that's the handle. They're identical for each side. Okay, before we can cut anything on the torch mate, we need some geometry. So another thing I love about SolidWorks, open the part, we want to cut, right click, select the face, export that face as a DXF. This is just a warning that you're in an assembly, we're going to save it as a copy. So we'll call it uh, handle. And it'll bring up this uh, window here, sorry, you click um, confirm the faces you like brings up a window that previews the face in a DXF format, just like so, and save, done. Now in TorchMate CAD, let's, let's import that file. So handle.dxf, and boom, there we go. Paste it on our table. Let's bring it down here. Now I do not want to cut the circle, and the reason is that, first of all, all plasma cutting happens at a taper especially mine, which is not a high definition plasma, and it can work hard in the steel, and that makes it difficult to then drill out. Much better off to just handle that. We're actually gonna use the Whitney punch. So let's break the path. Now that'll let us select the circle, delete it, and select it again, Control D, duplicate. I'm gonna hold Control and rotate that 180, drag it back down here to try to be somewhat efficient with our plate usage. I hit Alt S that toggles to make sure it looks like it's gonna cut out correctly. Control A, select everything again. Machine, create toolpath, mail, lead in, lead out. We'll do a quarter inch. We'll see what, let's see. I've been playing around with angles more lately for a more gentle lead in. We'll try 20 and then let's see when we do edit start point. Um, these are just for fun. This isn't really gonna matter. See, so yeah, I like that. Oh, that's a little close so maybe I'll go yeah, let's try it again with 30. So control Z, machine, toolpath, mail, 30 degrees, okay. And I'm fine with that, and I'm fine with that. So let's hop over to Plasma. File is loaded up in the TorchMate software. I've got my zero set in the bottom left corner here. 48 inches a minute, 137 volts, 45 amps. Let's rock and roll. I gotta say folks, I might be a machinist and a mill guy at heart, but uh, I love this torch mate. Sometimes I gotta shoot like a real time video where you just watch how fast it is to go from idea to CAD to cutting file to part in your hand. Awesome. Want to see the best way to knock dross off of plasma? There's a link to this in the info section. It's to Amazon. I get a kickback if you buy anything. Uh, these things are awesome though. Okay, we've got two plasma cut parts. Let's get a hole in one of them. Let's do this the simple way. A little bit of dicum. We know the distance uh, remaining is 3125. We're using a 3 8 uh, diameter bolt, so half of that, the radius plus the through, uh, sorry, there's a tornado alarm going off in the background. Plus the uh, material here would puts us at half an inch, so we'll just set our caliper to half inch. We'll mark a line along there and that's going to be plenty good for us folks. Use our center punch, get her on there, you know, eyeballed left to right. Let's head over to the Whitney. Here is another absolute favorite machine of mine in the shop. It is just a hole making beast. Jog down, expose the tip. Line that up with 
our center punch hole down and up. Now I would love to use the filmmaking skills here to just cut away and you'd assume it all worked fine. I've actually been having a problem with this uh, machine, which is that when the die is all the way down, the part has just a slight bit of, um, feels loose, which is not pinching on the die, but when you pull the uh, punch back up, it's sticking on the bottom. It doesn't happen with bigger parts because the uh, structural integrity of the part combined with the stripper plate means it, it, it's able to strip it off. But on thinner parts like this, I can't get them off the way I'd like to. So for any folks out there that may know more, I'd love to hear some advice. Um, this is a custom stripper plate that I actually made back in New York and was really proud of it. There's a video for it you can see uh, right here. It works great for most things, but there are a lot of times I want to uh, punch holes in thinner parts, uh, sorry, thinner meaning not as a material thickness, but it's width rather. And, uh, and I have to uh, wrench it off, as you see here, with a screwdriver. So um, I'm all ears if there's a better solution there. I still love this machine though. It does make beautiful holes though. Perfect fit for the 3 8 shoulder bolt. Let's duplicate that hole location. I'm gonna grab a 3 8 transfer punch. Oops, line up our parts. Again, plenty close enough. And there's no real reason these have to be perfectly aligned anyway. Now let's go drill and tap this for 5 16 18. Okay, letter F, drill. A little bit of cutting fluid. Here we go. If you want to see a video on a guy who knows how to do this the right way, check out Tom Lifton over at Ox Tool. He just published a great video on uh, using the bridge port. It's a little bit different because the spindle will reverse there and reverse very quickly, but power tapping and tapping very, very quickly switching between drill bits and taps and so forth. So, nice job Tom on that video. Sorry folks, no shortcut here but to use the uh, left arm and it gets in the way. Okay, take that out, lower it down, and finish by hand. Keeps them straight and it's fast. It's not Tom Lipton fast, but works for me. Okay. I'm going to go hit that on the belt sander just to knock the burrs off. Okay, let's see how they fit together. Perfect, can't complain about that. In the interest of getting these done quickly, I found some parts we're gonna make use of and adapt the design to what we've got laying around. So, let's talk about the spring. Probably, first of all, not even totally necessary. But what we're gonna do is I've got an old uh, 1 8 inch uh, type of dowel pin that's got uh, knurling on the edge. We're gonna tap, or we're gonna drill and uh, press fit that in here, and that'll support the guide the spring then we're gonna use a little uh, 632 button head screw, and that's gonna actually pinch down on the last link of the spring and hold it in place on the other side of the pliers. Then I found this in a toolbox laying around. Couldn't tell you what it is, but it's this plastic part, and it's got a chamfered edge that fits perfectly inside the hole for the hitch receiver. So we're gonna mount that on the one side and what we'll do is we'll just use this 3816 piece it came with and we'll just turn that down to something like 316 so we can drill and glue it inside that not tip there. And then the other end, we're still going to use a little bar across, but instead of rubber uh, bumpers that I didn't have on hand, 
we're just going to dr drill and tap it for quarter 20 because I had some of these nylon set screws laying around and those will work perfectly to hold the other side of the part. So let's keep moving along here. I am fast forwarding through most of this part because it's just drilling and tapping some holes and by now you guys know what to do and how to do that and if you guys aren't learning then it's a waste of time to be watching this so I'm just going to fast forward. But for those of you loyal enough to be watching as I fast forward, here is a sneak peek of an automation machine I'm working on that uh, hopefully in the next few months I'll be able to share uh, with you guys and I'm pretty darn excited about. Okay, let's turn that bolt down. We'll end up uh, cutting off that thread portion that's in the chuck anyway, but no need to hold on too tightly. We drilled it with a number 20, which is a 160 and change. That reads 255. We're gonna have some wobble there. We'll see how it cuts. We can glue it in if it's not a precise diameter after we turn it. We'll see. So we'll come up here and get it close. So we want to be at, call it 165, a few over. We're at 255. 255, 165 minus 2 divided by, so that's 45 thou. You can see that's already running out. So we may end up just gluing it in here. We're not going to worry about too much about it. Okay, yeah, still a fair amount short. We're getting way too much. Let's back this up and then much better. Okay, we're 180, so come in 15 more total. Divide that to seven and a half. There we go. Let's see how we did. Let's try out this hole first. Oh, that's perfect. Holy cow, that is awesome. Um, I actually don't even really want to take it out of there. I'm gonna go saw that off, and then we'll thread this little piece on. Sorry, we'll go that way. So I'll trim this down. That's perfect fit. Um, so do we have a fit there? That's perfect as well. Feels good. Sorry. Can't argue with that. That'll hold, retain the spring. So let's actually put it together real quick. So the idea is we will secure that spring on the end there and that'll give us our natural opening motion. Got a tapped hole here for 832. Feels great. All right, it is Saturday night at 6.30 p.m. I like you guys, but not that much. I'm gonna go hang out with my wife. I will finish this video up here uh, for me tomorrow, for you in about one second. I'm back. It's funny, it's significantly harder to shoot a video in multiple episodes. There's something about the flow and rhythm to it. So, I did cut that down on the bandsaw uh, off camera. No big deal, folks, just a bandsaw cut. Now, let's put this spring in here, and I wanted as much tension as I can but let it still close. So something like there, and that's gonna put us right about in the middle of the part. So I'm gonna go tap this right about here for 632 for that button head. I will be right back. Hole is tapped. Let's take our spring, slide our button head in between two of the last coils and tighten that down and see how that works. Perfect. Just enough spring pressure to open them up. Just about finished. Let's go grab a piece of aluminum and drill and tap it to fit on the other side here. Okay, I had a scrap piece laying around. I did trim it down to about 1.7 inches. So 
we've got our two holes on the outsides are centered. So part is 564, so we'll go 280. Close enough. I'll use my one, two, three block to support them here. And then those are up a quarter inch as well. Boom, boom. And then we had one hole that was offset. That's the clear through hole that fastens to the pliers. And that was almost at the bottom. So we'll go down here. I think about a 160 hole. And it was half inch from the one edge. Again, this is just quick and dirty. Okay. Now let's try something different on the drill and tap here. Got my number 20 drill in there. We're gonna drill all three holes and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna tap this. Try changing it up and see how it works. Okay, I've got the three holes drilled. I've got the part of my vise an opposite sort of direction because the um, th that hole's done, but these need tapped. We are gonna try using these Greenlee drill tap chamfer tools that you can see right here. Let's take out the quarter 20, and um, I've been using these for a little while now. They, um, they're usually meant for thin stuff or sheet metal, and you have to make sure you can't ever tap anything thicker and then the distance between the chamfer and the tap, or it won't work. Um, they're probably meant for th stuff thinner than this. We're going to try it. You do have to be careful. You have to be safe. You have to have your part in a vise for sure. It has to be secured. And you got to be careful because you'll be pushing uh, as it drills through, and you won't be moving forward very far. And then as soon as it hits that tap, it moves forward. So here we go. Perfect. Let's try the second one. Put a little fl cutting fluid on there and on the bit. Slick. I like it. Let's put it together. <laughs> you know, they may not look like the best thing in the world, but they if they work, we're good. Well, here's the big moment. No joke, folks, I, I've not done this yet. So here's one of our hitch targets. By the way, I think we do a really nice job of making the sort of serrated edge where the bullet holes go through. So come in here one-handed, stick them in, boom. Pick them up, hold them, drop it, let go, pop right out, come in. You know, maybe I'll knock the corners off of those edges just to help it going into the hole there. Boom, boom. For what it's worth, and I haven't, I did consciously do this. They are elect, they are electrically isolated with the rubber there, but um, that's perfect. I know that may seem silly, but um, that'll actually be really handy. One last trick, and I'm actually really excited for this. Let's go outside. Plasti dip. When I was a kid, my grandpa would always save the uh, tin snips or pliers or whatever that needed uh, some work on them or new grips. And we had the dip type of this stuff. I, I didn't find that, but I found the spray type. And uh, I had the biggest kick out of re-gripping the rubber handles. So uh, as a tribute to my grandpa, and fr frankly, it uh, should be nice, we'll try this aerosol plasti dip and see if we can get a little bit of rubber handle on these pliers. Okay, it takes a few coatings, so I'll try a few more here off camera and we'll take a look at uh, how they cured in the morning. All right, the Plasti Dip is on there. Didn't turn out as great as I was hoping. I seem to remember the uh, stuff I used as a kid working a little bit better. So if I find a can of the dip stuff rather than the aerosol, I'll have to try it. Um, didn't hurt though. And then I just threw a coat of spray paint on them to clean them up a little. 
Um, I will I will say sharing is a machinist. It's almost hard to publish a video on something like this because it's not this beautiful finished machine part where you feel like the pride of quality uh, of your work and craftsmanship shines through. It's a little bit of a, um, I don't want to say ugly, but um, it's, a, it's, just, it's a functional tool. I'll use it. I'm, I'm pretty darn happy with it. Um, it wouldn't hurt to have a little bit of cushion on the grip. So um, a quick fix would be to wrap it with like even tennis racket grip, um, but I'll keep my eye out when I'm at Harbor Freight or somewhere and see, I'm sure there'll be some slip on type rubber grips, or maybe I'll even cannibalize a pair from some uh, old pair of pliers. Anyways, important thing is they work. They're gonna be great for what I needed to do. I'm happy with the little spring mechanism. And uh, overall, just a cool project. And you know, I'd, I'd have to think if I wasn't filming, how quickly could I have done this? Definitely under an hour, for sure. Anyways, thank you guys. I really appreciate the likes, the shares, the enthusiasm, the comments, all that stuff. It's great. Uh, we're on Facebook. We post a lot on there as well as Instagram, uh, pictures along the way. So check us out there. Uh, otherwise, see, see you next week. Uh, I haven't decided. I've got a really cool Arduino project that actually is going to be tying into one of the shop uh, machines. And then I've got a, a Tormach project, which is something I've never used the Tormach for before. Uh, so it should be interesting. Stay tuned, folks. See you soon.